Hey everyone, Steve from Make Your Own Fun here and in this video I'm going to connect these two PS4 controllers to my Sega Dreamcast using two different methods. Now the second method is going to be pretty obvious, it's using the new Brook Wingman SD adapter. But the first method is something I find pretty interesting. And that involves the use of two things, the first one being the Total Control 3 which takes the Sega Saturn controller and converts it to the Dreamcast. And the second being something I featured in a previous video, the Retrobit Bluetooth to Sega Saturn adapter. You can probably see how this is going to work. I'm just going to plug this adapter into this adapter. And with that, I'm going to be able to connect my PS4 controllers to the Dreamcast. Now, like I said before, the second method is just using this new Brook Wingman SD which basically does it all for you. But I had the idea of using my Total Control 3, which I'm sure a lot of you collectors have as well, along with the Retrobit um, Saturn adapter to kind of see if there's another way to do this and connect a PS4 controller to the Dreamcast. And it works great. I'm gonna do this all with my Dreamcast powered off. Just conventional wisdom of not plugging any third party things into a Dreamcast while it's on. So I'm gonna plug that in here. Once it's all plugged in, you can sync it after it's turned on and it just kind of recognizes that there is a controller plugged in. So that's not gonna matter too much. You can set it all up before you start. And then I'm gonna plug in the Retrobit adapter to the Total Control 3. Just like that. And then <laughs> the Brook one, obviously it's a much easier solution and you'll just take the Dreamcast side of it and plug it in. So now I've got my Dreamcast on and you can probably hear that whirring in the background. So it's time to pair the controllers. Now, the first thing I'll do, you can see obviously that this Dreamcast, I haven't replaced the battery or done any battery mods like that, but I will be doing the Total Control 3 first. Got both controllers here. They are not on, not doing anything. Not gonna be able to hear anything there. Like I said in my video about using this actually with the Sega Saturn, all I have to do is put this into pairing mode. Hopefully you can see it blinking. Let's just see what happens if I hold it down. There we are, it's blinking more rapidly now, so that's ready to pair up. Then if you've got a PS4, you just know it's PlayStation and share. There we are, pairing mode for that. And now they've paired, so there we are. PS4 and the Total Control 3 with the retro bit adapter are now paired. And there we are. Left and right, moving left and right. You can still see this controller does nothing while this one is now connected to the Dreamcast. Set the time to whatever time, the default time. And there we are in the Dreamcast menu and at least we know the D-pad's working nicely. Go into the VMU menu. Um, the funny thing is, I don't have a VMU plugged into the Total Control 3 here, but there is one built in into the Brook adapter. So that's why you're seeing one pop up there. Um, you can just kind of see what there is. Uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 save, great. And now for the Brook adapter. So this one is a much more simple operate. I mean, I don't know, it's actually kind of the same in simplicity. So I don't think it's in pairing mode right now. It's just blinking slowly. But if I hold it for a bit, there we are. That's in pairing mode. And now this second controller also in pairing mode. And now they've both synced up. Took a little bit longer, but I think it's because I kind of put this control in a weird state. And now this one also too can navigate the Dreamcast menu. So there we are. Now I've got controllers in Dreamcast ports one and two, both PS4 controllers. Um, pressing left on this one, right on this one. <laughs> I'm sure you guys get the idea. And now I'll just pop in a game and then we'll see how they actually do with their default button mappings. So as you can see, I've loaded up Marvel vs. Capcom 2, which just happens to be one of my favorite games on the Dreamcast. And I'll just put it into versus mode to show off both controllers. So this is player one that's connected to the Total Control 3. And you can see there that I've got, I can control the player one handicap and then the player two handicap. And I'll choose a random stage. So I'm using the kind of built-in VMU of the Brook adapter, so I don't actually have any new characters unlocked, but let's just pick a random team. I always have to do this one by one because it's just me here. I don't even know why I'm choosing the specific types. I'm just showing off the controller. But anyways, back to player one. So we've got D-pad and analog stick control on the total control side, nothing on the right stick. And then just as long as the buttons are all the same, light, heavy, light, heavy, partner A, partner A, partner B, partner B. Cool. 
then we can evaluate the control is the same. So I think light, heavy, light, heavy, then R1 on the PS4, oh, on, the, on the DualShock 4, partner A. Oh, that's probably, these are both probably partner B. Then L1 and L2 are partner A. So there we are. Obviously, share doesn't do anything. There's no select button on the Dreamcast and start is your start button. So fully operational. Um, obviously, the Dreamcast only has kind of six face buttons or six non-directional buttons. And there are eight on the PS4 controller. So it seems like these are both L and these are both R, which is obviously the way it should be. Now onto the Brook configuration. Uh, I think it's all basically going to be the same. It's going to be a bit hard because I don't have a partner A and a partner B, but I'm sure it's all the same. R2 and L2 doing the same thing at the moment just because they don't have anything different to do. And same with L1 and R1. Then light, heavy. Light, heavy. Pause, player 2 pause. And then I've got left analog stick and D-pad movement. And there we are, look, look, one thing that's different is that the right stick is also just doing something. Uh, uh, okay. We'll run this again. Ran out of time. We'll just select teams as fast as possible. So I'm back on the Brook adapter, and then if you saw earlier, there was a little something happening when I was using the right stick. So let's see what that is. So pressing the stick down doesn't do anything, but Clicking the right stick left seems to be the same as square here. Clicking it up, same as triangle. Clicking it down, same as X. Clicking it right, I'm sure is going to be the same as circle. So there we are. You get a little more functionality with the Brook adapter, but obviously nothing that is, I guess, or say a huge advantage and nothing that you're missing otherwise. So that's pretty much it. There are two ways to connect a PS4 controller to your Dreamcast. You've got your normal Brook adapter. I wouldn't recommend going out and I'm trying to look for these two just for this purpose, but if you have them already, then you already have a PS4 to Dreamcast solution. And so I guess that just about does it for this video. You know, it started because when I found out that Brook was coming out with an adapter with the Wingman SD, and I thought, is there another way I can connect PS4 controllers to the Dreamcast? And I knew that there was a way to connect my PS4 controllers to the Saturn. And if I can go PS4 to Saturn, Saturn to Dreamcast, uh, that's where this came about. And to my surprise, it worked. I have a few other adapters that connect Saturn to Dreamcast, but for some reason they don't work and I just wasn't going to show something that's not going to work. Uh, the Total Control 3 is the only one I have that does work with the RetroBit adapter. Everything else just kind of it doesn't know what to do with the RetroBit protocol, I guess. I might have said in the video, this isn't my first choice to connect modern controllers to the Dreamcast. The Brook adapter is still just a much more simple way to do it. It's got, you know, USB ports for easy syncing or wired play if you don't want to sync. Although I'm not sure if the Dreamcast can output enough power to charge a controller, so don't quote me on that. But yeah, this still is much more useful and, you know, works for Saturn as well as the Dreamcast too. So this was just kind of a little thought experiment that I had uh, or an idea. It's good to see that it works and it's a bit of a novelty and it breathes new life to the Total Control 3. Uh, my favorite part of the Total Control 3 is the twin stick mode, which lets me use the Saturn twin sticks. So you can use it for Xeno Crisis or Virtual On. But knowing that you can combine it with other modern technologies like the RetroBit adapter is also cool. Anyways, that's all for this video. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.